All right, welcome everyone. Uh, welcome back to campus, whether you are fully back in person or you're still kind of doing a hybrid or virtual, virtual approach. Uh, I know this semester has been a lot challenging for a lot of people as they're bringing people back to campus. Um, so we're glad that you're here and taking some time out to attend. I'm excited to announce today's presenter, Leanne McGivern. Uh, she's a crowd favorite and no stranger to the IT community. She's a seasoned relationship management professional at Purdue University, very active in the BRM Institute. We're excited and privileged to have her here today. Uh, I'm going to go over some uh, housekeeping rules. Uh, so the presentation is going to follow this format. It's going to last about 30, 35 minutes with time left over at the end for Q&A. Q but we'll be monitoring the Q&A and, and chat to see if any questions are have come in in between and Leanne, feel free to, to answer questions as they come in or whatever you're comfortable with. Everyone will be on mute. Uh, really strongly encourage you to use the Q&A window to ask questions. Um, I might miss something in the chat, but definitely use the chat to uh, have conversations with each other. Um, this event is being recorded and will avail be available on the ITSM website within five business days. And as you all know, we're moving to the community platform uh, and the listserv is eventually going away. So we're going to be moving a lot of our content, a lot of our announcements and a lot of our uh, email threads and conversations into that format. Um, so please be aware that eventually all this stuff's going to be moved into the new community platform and uh, the listserv, as you know, will be going away. All right. Uh, without further ado, uh, I will turn it over to uh, Leanne. Thanks, Mitchell. So la I think it was a couple months ago when uh, the BRM Institute held a, an engagement activity. We had a lot of members from the EDUCAUSE uh, community also join in. And as usual, we get a lot of questions around metrics and reporting and so on and so forth. And so after that, I reached out to Mitchell and said, hey, I had a presentation from 2018. I can pull it out and dust it off. And would you like me to to present it um, to the community. So that is why we're here today. So again, thank you, Mitchell. So what I'm gonna do is, as I went back into this presentation, it's as valid today as it was in 2018. And really to, um, hang on here, thought we had it. To kind of set the foundation is this. If you work in the business um, relationship, um, this, I'm sorry, BRM um, space, you know that we have a business relationship maturity model. And one of the things over time that I also experience is that teams mature also. And I think it's important whether you're new to BRM or your, your team is new to BRM, that you will also, you will, you will mature. And with that, your met metrics and reporting will also reach um, mature. And you're gonna see that today. Um, I think a lot of the things that as we were looking at metrics and reporting is we often were initially looking in the future and what we needed to do or what I did was pull us back and really talk about what we can report on what metrics were available today and you'll see um, also in the presentation and where we started. And the other thing too is often people will think oh I have to start from scratch I have to start collecting data today. And one of the things that's always interesting to me is that we already have data. We just haven't thought outside the box and how to use it. And so we're going to pull a lot of different threads in today and just show that maturity. So the other thing that's really important, I think, with metrics is kind of the what are you trying to report against? So here at um, in Ag IT, so for the, we're in the College of Agriculture at Purdue University, we actually have a directive. And this is it. If you've heard me in other presentations, I usually pull it in. We've tweaked it over time, but it's basically still the same since 2015. And that is to bring the full potential of the technology investment directly to the Purdue Agriculture faculty. Now, this is what we then always want to report against. And that's why we, if you look at our metrics and if you look at the annual reports later on, it will always tie back to this directive. 
So start somewhere. Now, one of the things uh, Mitchell will be sharing, uh, you have, I'm not quite sure how that all works, Mitchell, but we do have some templates or we, uh, that we've used here um, with our BRM team, and we are making those available today for you. So what I did, this actually goes back to 2017 because we were really struggling with trying to understand value and trying to put some metrics towards that. And behind the scenes, I put this together and then as we got a little bit further in what we refer to as a lot of our work days or brainstorming sessions, that's when I finally pulled it out. So what do I mean by that? So what we did was actually get into a room and look at all the problems or all the issues we were having. And we just listed them all. We weren't wor worried about whether they were right or wrong per individual. It was, it was what we were seeing. Once we had, and the, the list was actually longer than this. I wanted, I, I'm pretty sure we had about six columns of things that we saw going on. So in, for instance, unaware of IT resources. So our faculty who are our business partners are unaware of a lot of IT resources across campus. Another one in here, are unaligned services. And so what we did then, once we had this long list, we then started utilizing the template. We clustered them and put all like things together. So in this situation, we're looking at really that faculty awareness of IT, there's a disconnect, there might be a gap in services, um, they're not, services aren't being leveraged, all those types of things, but we put it all together. And I wanna say when we were done with this and we prior, prioritize those clusters, we had about five of them that we decided to then work on pulling metrics towards this problem. Now, again, what we also need to understand is this was back in 2017 into 2018. Our, the way we report today is very different than how we reported back then. But again, this goes back to that whole maturity. We were trying to figure out how to report with what we had at that point in time, but also where we were at as a BRM team. So once we had these clustered, we then said, okay, as BRMs, what are we doing to help with that problem? So for example, a faculty is unaware of IT resources. What we would do is then go out, navigate, and then connect faculty to some of the resources that they were missing. Um, unaligned services, we were listening to faculty. Um, where were the gaps? What didn't they understand? based on what their needs are, so on and so forth. One of the things uh, faculty didn't understand, you know, again, back to that awareness, was we were creating targeted marketing emails to help our technology partners with that, um, directly to faculty. So again, here's a problem, then here's the activities BRM was doing to help address those problems. Benefits. So that was the next thing. The one thing that we are really good at in IT is benefits. So when we talk value, people also often wanna talk benefits. And so instead of trying to ignore the benefits thing, because again, that's what we're good at. You know, something's fast enough, um, it's faster, it's smaller, it's 10 times greater than. Um, we said, okay, let's just address this. So again, we look at the problem, we look at the activity, what are the benefits to what we are doing? So we can hear opportunities to engage. We can implement, help implement appropriate services. We build those relationships and trust. Again, this was getting us to the work to metrics and it seemed to help pull the mindset as we were working towards that metrics um, question. Um, we were able to do this much, much quicker than we were when we had tried to do it earlier, I wanna say three to four months earlier, and we were really struggling with things. So the big piece to this that we often forget about in IT is cost. And one of the things I often also talk about is cost is more than dollars and cents. What IT will often talk about in the beginning is that cost. I think because it's a black and white and people can either afford it or they can't. What we have found in BRM that if you pull back the layers, there's other costs that are actually more important. So let me give you an example. I have a faculty that I started working with two years ago and his initial conversation was around the cost of 
sensor, uh, soil sensors. But as we talked and we really listened and wanted to understand what he was trying to do, what his goals and objectives were, his, his bigger costs, the bigger things that he was concerned about was scalability and sustainability. He wanted to be able to scale his four acre plot to a multi-state um, research endeavor, but also he understood life cycle replacement. And so he needed a solution that he could sustain over a long period of time. And as that project continues, um, they were able to address the, those two big costs for him, again, sustainability and scalability. And then once he had those issues resolved, he then went and, um, with grants and, um, and um, oh, let's just say grants, was able to cover the costs of the sensors that he wanted to use. And so one of the things I often will say to IT is please don't lead with dollars and cents. Really get in there and understand those costs. Once we do that, once we understand that from problem to cost, then we can start taking, um, start talking about value. So in this scenario, again, pointing back to that problem is really, what we're really trying to get at is reduce time to re IT solutions. So if faculty are unaware of IT resources, we listen to what they need, we look for opportunities to engage, then we can do this much quicker. And this gets us to those value statements. So improved communication around IT events and resources. Again, unaware of IT events, uh, what we do is continue to uncover some of those. We work with our technical partners. We create those uh, marketing emails uh, with on behalf of our emails, just uh, technical partners. And then again, we can help improve that communication. Once we were here, then we gave a title to this entire piece. And I just call it a value title. And so what this whole area is about is navigating and connecting to the IT investment. And so you might be thinking, okay, well, I thought we were talking about metrics today. So once we had this in place, it became really, really easy to identify the metrics that we had as of that moment in time that would be that we could use to show not only how we were addressing the problem, but also some of those value pieces. So some of the things, and in the beginning, it was a lot of leading and lagging indicators because again, that's where we were at maturity wise. So number of consultations. So for example, how many consultations do we have between a faculty and a technology partner? Um, that marketing piece, how many were sent, how many were opened, clicked, so on and so forth. And I have a few examples of that here in a bit. That is how we were, we were able to kind of get over the obstacle of metrics and really started our path on reporting. Okay, so the next step in this in metrics is to really utilize the data that you do have today. And I think that's one of the things that often surprises people when I work, I've done some coaching in this space, is that you have more data than you think you do. So one of the easy ones for us is we do have a CRM tool that we do use. Uh, we can, with an API connected to our Microsoft Outlook that allows us to upload events that we attend, our meetings. We do track um, engagements. It does have a, uh, we use Zoho. Uh, it does have a phone-based app so we can do it on the fly. So we're able to utilize that again to, to um, point back to some of the things that we're doing. Don't forget about your process management tools, uh, your ticketing system. In the beginning, we were pulling some resources out of that, also project portfolio. And then the one other thing is don't, you know, take the opportunity to step back, look at what your technical partners or your IT partners might be doing, but also your, your faculty or your business partners. What data might they have? So here's a good example. It's kind of starts that question between us, so what? So we set up consultations between a faculty and a, our teaching and learning technology group for some one-on-one -on -one, um, instructional design consultations. 
Okay, great. But did it go any further than that? And in some cases, by working with them, we were able to get data that said, yes, on average, those consultations led to two to three more meetings to fully optimize some of the instructional design that they were working on. So again, don't forget to ask. Now, a lot of times you'll find um, there may not be data, but then you never know if you don't ask. So again, you, this is part, this comes out of our um, CRM tool. This is, this will be available so you can take a, a look at it, but I can't emphasize enough that this is back in 2017 and sort of into 2018, we no longer utilize the dashboard, okay? But this again, this is where we were starting and it was where we were at at that point in time. So in 2017, we were working with um, this dashboard, but let me walk through a couple of these. So one of the things um, that overarching title was removing IT distractions. Often what I heard in the beginning was we were gonna create more work. And while we did do some tickets, what we found is as we went in, there were often unresolved issues or incidents. And so by following up, um, we were able to help remove those because those, those issues are still there for both the uh, support services group as well as the business partner. Communication um, channels. Again, we do some, um, Zoho allows us to do marketing emails where we're able to see if they're open and how many we have sent. So we're able to show um, what that difference is. Navigating and connecting, uh, we do a lot of informal engagements. Again, we were tracking that because we were out and about a lot more. Some of this is also answering why are you doing what you're doing. Um, also the consultations, I, it was important for us in the beginning to kind of show that we were delivering on our commitment and that was to get IT partners closer to the idea and with people sooner than later. So we were able to show that, hey, um, our research computing group, this is how many consultations we did um, in the past X amount of time. But again, remember, this is our starting point but you have to start somewhere and this is what this was our start optimizing it investment this was this was about us getting faculty new faculty closer to that um high performance computing sooner in a sense sooner than level um later compared to other faculty and also creating strategic partnerships but at the end of the day, I wasn't happy with this because it was kind of a so what. So we did X amount of consultations. We had X amount of strategic partnerships, kind of that so what, who cares? And so that is when, again, as we were maturing, then our reporting also matured. And that led us to impact statements. If you work with a land grant university, these are probably very familiar with you for, um, for you. And so that is part of the reason I was an advocate for impact statements. It's required for cooperative extension and any research um, work for grants in the land grant institution. And which that meant was our college administration was familiar with them. It really focuses on problem solved, um, results, impact. Again, that whole maturity piece flexible and then stand up and then they can stand alone or they can roll up. And I'm gonna talk about that a little bit later because that's kind of where we're at now with our reporting space. So impact statements. Oh, well, hang on here. So kind of our reporting path, again, this will show our maturity. So there's step one, we did some impact statements with a lot of leading and lagging indicators that you just saw. Our step two from about 2019 is we really started talking more about the qualitative um, value behind it. We had some leading and lagging indicators. In 2020, um, we didn't have any leading and, lag la leading and lagging indicators in the report at all. And our goal is to really be able to quantify the, quali the qualitative. And that's, again, that's just the path that we are on. So success stories. We often refer impact statements to success stories because it just translates better. Again, um, land grant, uh, known format. But the great thing about impact statements is that there's only three parts to it. It's about the problem or an idea or an opportunity. 
It's about response, our efforts, and impact. But the key with this is the problem is really our business partner's problem. It's about an idea a business partner may have or an opportunity that may exist. The impact or value is also on kind of the, the back end of a project. Did that project lead to um, what they had hoped it would? Is it really making that impact? Where we don't lose sight is that response part. What was, what was our BRM efforts? In the end, can I go yep. back to a, sorry, posted a yep. question chat referring back to the leading yep. and lagging indicators. Uh, Fiona's wondering right. what, what they're referring to. Okay, so leading and lagging, um, you can always do a quick Google. Uh, we're most familiar, especially in IT, about lagging. Those are those post counts. Um, we created 17 consultations or 105 consultations in the past six months. Um, you see lagging indicators more than leading. Leading indicators are um, metrics that will help determine the outcome. We don't have many of them that we have used. Okay. I think what we, like I said, what we see a lot of are those lagging indicators. Uh, we're comfortable with those in IT because they're numbers. It's kind of that black white scenario. Um, but again, there's a lot of that so what behind it because so what, so, so what if we did 17 consultations with our research computing group? What if nothing happened behind that? What if nobody signed up for high performance computing or took advantage of the, um, the, the research storage that we, we refer to as data depot? And while the lagging indicators do show something that we're doing work, it's really not showing the value or the impact of the work that we are doing, which is why we began to mature past the metrics. I hope that helps. So impact statements, again, problem response and impact. So again, another template, it's really straightforward. Uh, just describe the problem. Um, is there underutilization of IT investment? Um, are there opportunities to champion IT innovations? Then what did we do as a BRM team? And then what happens on the back end? And the cool thing about this is impact statements can last over a period of time. In the beginning, it can be a lot about the knowledge gained. It can then, you can then come back and update that, um, that impact statement to talk about, did, are they doing something different? Are they utilizing more technology resources on campus? So there's a lot of opportunities with um, impact statements. So here's a couple, I'm gonna give you a couple examples, but I will make the, um, our annual reports available. Uh, you just have to email me. My email will be at the end. Uh, our annual reports are built around impact statements in the, um, in the center pieces. So this one was about an HPC, or so high performance computing node for labs. But if we pull this out, if you start with a second sentence, that really describes the problem. We had a faculty that wanted to bring uh, the HBC node into the classroom, into a research lab. Um, what did BRM do? Now remember, this is back, now we're, now we're talking about 2018 into 2019. We facilitated that meeting, and then this was the outcome, this was the impact. In this case, uh, it was about UAVs, data transfer. Again, the first part is they would be collecting and sending data. What did we do? We brought together all the potential partners to the table to be, um, so that we can, they could begin planning. And where, what, you know, what was that impact? The cool thing about this, as I said, you can always go back and update it. These impact statements grow. And this is one of those areas where it started out with knowledge and now it's it's in the and they're in the process of pulling that data actually to campus and it's really cool to watch these work um, watch these evolve and also all the IT and technical partners working together. 
So as I indicated, we did do some um, annual reports from 2018 to 2020. There were multiple pieces to this because part of it was I still needed to educate our administration. So these would go to our college leadership as well as the provost. Um, uh, our provost was our college dean at the time we started BRM. So I still like to update him on what we're doing. And again, as I, I point out in the bottom, 2018, we talked about leading and lagging indicators presented as impact statements or within an impact statement, where in 2019, we started talking more about results in the impact statements with a few leading and lagging indicators, where in our 2020 report, we have no leading and lagging indicators in there at all. We're really talking about value and results via our impact statements. So where are we at today? And this has really been kind of a vision that I've had, not only for BRM, but also for Ag IT, so agriculture information technology. So we're distributed um, IT function in the college was we're really gonna focus on those impact statements. The beginning and end of the annual reports were important at the time because I, again, I was helping educate on what we were doing and why we were doing it but I felt that we were really over that obstacle. And what we really needed to focus on, what is the value or what are the impact that we bring as a BRM team to um, the college and also to our business partners, which are our faculty. The other thing is that there's opportunities for this across the entire department. And with that- And, um, and Leanne, we, sorry, yeah. uh, another question came in. Uh, yeah. Your reports are lovely as uh, audiences uh, mentioning what yeah. do you use a particular tool to create these reports no um, so the first one so we had a program coordinator at a time which is currently in a, in the hiring freeze uh, she did use um adobe i think it was illustrator but what we are using currently with our impact statements of course the first one is in word the the technical documentation but we actually are using Microsoft PowerPoint um, to keep the um, the background and all the text boxes in place. And then all anybody has to do is go in and update the content or put their content in. So in this case, um, the, the title, the two and the subtitle, and then there's just boxes. And so my big thing is I always want to be able to reuse our reports. You can reuse them if you want to do a presentation for abstracts. Um, if you need to ever pull something out for another reporting need, it becomes really easy to um, plug and play. And so I always try to make sure that they're in a tool that I can use as well as anybody else. I'm not a big um, Adobe user in that space. So it's a little bit of a challenge. But at this point, we're in Microsoft and um, PowerPoint, and it's working like a charm. And so again, so we actually hired a professional student. Uh, she was finishing up actually her PhD, so we had a really great opportunity. Uh, she was waiting to graduate in August. Uh, she's been both in the technical documentation space, but more importantly, the professional documentation space. So she worked with Brandon Reese, one of our um, business relationship managers over the summer and created our technical documentation as well as the uh, format, both, we have both vertical, now horizontal, kind of that plug and play um, in, in PowerPoint. So very fortunate. And what that's gonna allow us to do is be able to give these to all of the teams across AIT to be able to utilize and begin to show some of the impact, not only BRM, but our support services. The one I'm actually showing here is our academic IT, um, uh, our, our academic IT specialist team. And what we'll be able to do is each team has their space in this project, but then what we can do is pull the three together and then roll them up into a department impact statement. And in this remote uh, sensor deployment, we actually have um, an impact statement from BRM, AITS, and also our systems engineering team. Okay, so 
so this is where we're currently at. Uh, we have the first one done. Uh, we actually had three of them done, but the first one's been edited. Um, this will be going to our strategic governance committee uh, next week. And what we're going to do is introduce the fact that our reporting just continues to evolve and mature, and that we, are get, we will start utilizing this then um, across the department. So that's where we're at today. So with that, that's just a really high level because we wanted to make sure that there was plenty of time. Um, know that we are always available here at Purdue. Um, I know what it's like to start and feel like you're starting from scratch. Um, we share a lot of our templates and our reporting in that because if, if, again, if we can help people get to where they need to be faster, we're more than happy to. Well, thanks, Leanne. That was a great presentation. We had some questions that came in uh, during the presentation. Um, you know, we'll open it up now to uh, to questions. Um, if you do want to come off mute, I can unmute you as long as you raise your hand. So we do encourage uh, if you want to ask or ask a question verbally, I'll give you the option to do that. If uh, Leanne, if people are more interested in the BRM Institute or any of that information, what's the best way to then get connected to, to that resource? So both Mark Sullivan and Brandon Reese are higher ed co-leads uh, for the Institute. So you're welcome to reach out to them directly. Uh, Mitchell, I can provide their um, contact information. Otherwise, you can just go to the BRM Institute website and, and start there. And we also, for those who may not be familiar, there is a business relationship management um, Educause community group. I encourage you to, to join them as well. Um, I'm going to go ahead and take uh, Diane off mute. She's raised her hand, so I'll allow her to ask a question. Go ahead, uh, Diana. Diane, sorry. If you're She's talking, you're on mute. Yes. Oh, oh uh, there we go. Yeah. Okay, good. <laughs> Caller, you're on the line. Hi, Diane. Can you hear us? While she's uh, figuring out technology, I'll jump to a question that came in the chat from Kathleen. So she's asking, would you prepare an impact statement for every problem that you're working on? No, we do not. Um, there are opportunities there, but we often are looking for, shall we say, um, some of the emerging tech at this point. But in the beginning we did, but based on the direction where our college is going with um, both IT and emerging tech, we're currently focused on a lot of the new IoT. Uh, we've got a research data ecosystem that is in um, phase two of being built. And a lot of this is also about listening. What are people interested in? So while it's important that um, help tickets or incident management's occurring. And could we do an impact statement on that? Absolutely, especially if it's addressing a large problem. But what our administration is currently most in, um, interested in is really those high impact uh, spaces in the research and teaching space. And those are what we are currently focused on. But again, it depends a, a lot on what people are asking. Um, I can't emphasize enough what we were reporting against four years ago is completely different than what we're reporting on today with impact statements. So again, you look back, remember the dashboard, there was a lot of service pieces in there because that was where we were at as a BRM team. Uh, in, um, not that we were in the space, but we were interacting with that space more instead of just getting things in the process. Where today we're really focused on those innovative faculty and uh, what the problems they're having as well as the results. Thank you for that. Uh, go ahead, Diane, if you still wanted to ask your question. So our organization, hello, can you hear me? Yep. yep. Okay, our organization uh, doesn't have a BRM group. So how do we introduce that to our organization? Because I, I'm listening to your presentation really, I think it's important that we're missing, have, have this is missing in our organization. So our, we were started with the director at the time, um, Pat Smoker, and our, the dean at the time, Jay Acreage, uh, 
the concern was that the technology investment was not getting directly to faculty. Faculty were still standing up servers under desks in corners. They were looking, you know, research story, uh, research, research data was being stored still on hard drives, so on and so forth. Now times have changed, but we all, we just didn't, there was, there was a feeling that faculty were not going to navigate and connect to the large technology footprint across campus. I guess that's the best way to do it. And so we need, what the idea was, how it was presented was, if we put a dedicated team in this space, that will help um, close that gap. So hence the directive, and then reporting against that, because that's really what they're interested in. In a sense, are we doing what we said we were going to do? And that drives a lot of our reporting. If you, if you ever wanna explore offline, I'd be happy to explore offline. But the, the other thing that's important for those on the ITSM side, um, I now have responsibilities also for a service management group, so our help desk, as well as academic IT specialists. So really the whole front line, working with faculty and staff across the entire college. A lot of this would also work in the ITSM space. Impact statements, while, um, while maybe more that high-end research, so on and so forth, but we do have impact that we're making and helping as an ITSM group or even um, academic IT specialists. So that's why I've been passionate with this is because we can move impact statements across multiple teams. Yeah, I just, like I say, just in a, a general comment, you know, bringing your ITSM and, and being over or supporting ITSM um, practices, there's so much that we can do better as an ITSM organization where it's not just about delivery of services, but in, in ITIL 4, if any of you have not taken it yet, it's really about the co-creation. And the only way to co-create is to get there, get out in front of your customers, talk to them, find out what their needs are, not just about delivering services. So very passionate about this as well. So that's why I frequently have you uh, here, Leanne. So um, I hopefully that answered uh, Justin's question. I think a little bit of, he's asking to, do you have a champion? I think that was the only slight difference in her in his question. Right. So Amy has one in there about the corresponding central BRM team. So the there is not a, formal BRM team at the central level there there are there is um, there are some IT relationship manage, managers as part of the um, service organization but we interact more with technical partners so the research um, so our research computing group our teaching and learning group but what we're also working a lot with is our technical partners now in other colleges. So in, in the College of Agriculture, we have a lot of faculty looking for emerging tech. And in engineering, polytechnic, et cetera, they're building a lot of the emerging tech that our faculty use. And so that is also where we're focused in that space of making those collaborations and partnerships. So we do work and, um, you know, what our, Central IT is incredibly important for a lot of the work that our faculty do because we need that networking, so on and so forth. But where we're at today is we're at about approximately 55 technical partners across campus. And what we often say is that ranges from core IT to emerging tech. And so they're part of the equation, but they're not the only piece of the equation. Uh, Justin or Amy, if you have a follow-up, um, you can feel free to type that in in the Q&A or ask to come off mute. Our philosophy is if you're doing anything with tech across Purdue University, we want to know about it because we might be able to help build those um, partnerships by connecting, whether it's, uh, again, a technical group or another faculty building with our faculty here at in the College of Ag. I see a question came in from uh, Cameron. Uh, thanks, good, thanks for confirming, Justin. Um, so Cameron's asking in his organization, it's a, it's, a sent, it's a paragraph, so let me go ahead and just read it to you. In organization, we repurposed a vacancy prior to filling in and hired someone who had that experience. With that, our executive director did a roadshow with the colleague 
executive committee and department heads to advertise this permission and the value, this position, the value would bring. Then we set up introduction meetings with all the executive committees, department heads, so they could meet and open the dialogue. And then we had them start routing inquiries to that person as they came up. Um, I don't know if there's the rest of the question got cut off, but Cameron, did you want to come off mute? Maybe better if you ask this uh, in person or using your voice. Or maybe it just was a, a comment. Right. So, so what I, I'm going to just, I'll explain what how, in a sense, how we did this at Purdue. We tried to approach it this way in the beginning. And what we often heard was we already do that. You're just going to create more work. You're going to create more tickets, um, more projects, so on and so forth. All valid comments. Um, but how we, so when that in a sense wasn't working, what I decided to do, I kind of turned us on the dime and said, okay, this is what we've committed to. We've committed to getting technical partners closer to the idea or, um, or as soon as we hear that a faculty wants to do something, our commitment is to get them with that faculty to have that conversation. So we don't have, um, faculty trying to implement solutions and then it doesn't work or they hand it to IT to try to fix it. And so what we did when we were having opposition on, on kind of doing those public presentations, we just went out and did the work. We sh what I told the team is we're going to show up and do BRM today. And what that meant was going out and about, uh, meeting with faculty, listening to them. And as soon as we had that potential, we would immediately turn to our technical partners and get that consultation scheduled. The other thing too is we don't deep dive into anything. So it's really easy for us to know the prices or the parameters, so on and so forth. But that doesn't help build a relationship between the faculty member and the technical partner. And so as soon as we hear, we listen for keywords and then we ask, okay, we, we'd like to get you set up with uh, somebody in, uh, let's say research computing or in our teaching and learning technologies group. Would you be open to that? It is rare that we hear no. And then we actually set up, do the overhead of setting up that meeting we reach out, we ask for a person, we don't send anybody ever into a generic email. Again, just that commitment. And then based on that, that has helped build our relationships, not only with faculty, but also with technology partners. But it, what's really cool is it's also building relationships and opportunities with between our faculty and technical partners. All right, we still have a good 10 minutes or so. If anybody has any other questions they want to bring up in the Q&A, or if you raise your hand, I can take you off unmute or take you off mute uh, if you want to ask a question. The other thing, too, is if you have further questions and you're just not quite sure or maybe don't have the time today, don't hesitate to reach out. Um, let me go ahead and share my contact information again. Is it in the slide um, deck just for reference? Yeah, well? okay. don't hesitate. It's here at the bottom. Um, don't hesitate to reach out. So if you're curious about our CRM tool, uh, Brandon Reese has been doing some overviews with other universities. Um, we're happy, again, to help. And we don't promote that this is, this is the end solution. If you leave today and think, wait a minute, you know, I maybe won't be able to do that, but I think we can do this instead. Um, that's what our goal is. It's how do we help people think, okay, wait, we can tackle this. We can move forward, um, learn from our successes, but also our mistakes. We've had a lot of mistakes, um, especially in the beginning. That first year and a half was pretty rough. Um, you know, we just, we just want to be here to kind of to help and to share um, where there are opportunities. That sounds like, Leanne, from the uh, questions, we need a whole nother webinar on how do we get started, right? So yeah. <laughs> it's, it can be tough. Um, but once you get started, just the opportunities are there. Well, um, it doesn't, okay, it looks like, uh, spoke too soon, looks like somebody wants to uh, come off mute. So Amy, go ahead, if you can, uh, you should be able to come off mute now. Okay, got it, can you hear me? Yep. yep. 
Um, so no, actually, you know, I, I was looking up Soho. Um, I'm, I'm in New York. So I was like, oh, Soho, what is going on with that? I've never heard of that. Um, and then I realized it's Z-O-H-O, just yes. FYI for everybody yes. that was looking for it. Um, oh, Soho, I, not, not, uh, yes. Oh, Soho. <laughs> not Zoho, yes. Soho is a part in uh, New York City. Yeah, right? Exactly, in New York City. I was like, okay. Yeah. Um, no, but I finally found it, Z-O-H-O, in case anybody else wants to look at it. And it seems to be an uh, some kind of cloud platform that, that yeah. has very, Interesting pricing um, is um, how. When did you start using it? So full transparency. Um, another group in the organization was utilizing that instead of Salesforce. I probably should, I don't know if I should say names, but it is what it no. is. And so yeah. since they already had a tool to let me go in and look, that's how we ended up with them. Now. Um, it can be costly, especially if you go for the reporting piece. That's why we only have BRMs in at this time. So we may have to move out. Um, we do look at it annually to make sure that it continues to meet our needs. The great, there's two things why we've stayed in Zoho. One, we've been able to customize it without any local developer help. So we're able, so if you go into Zoho, you'll think, this doesn't make sense. The Zoho that we can show you will look nothing like the Zoho you see um, if you go in. You know, you, if you get that minor free, then they let you take a look. We even renamed all the modules. So instead of um, leads, it's something else. Um, our ideation is in there. So where we cap ca capture our ideation and of course uh, uh, the reporting. We still, I still do keep track of engagements in that. I'm looking for trend lines. Are we down, are we up? Especially as we went into COVID, um, moving into this environment, we weren't out and about uh, obviously because things were canceled. Um, but the main reason we're still in there besides the whole customization piece is that marketing um, email. We can create a single marketing template and we can pick and choose of our business partners that we need to send it to. And when it goes out, it comes from our individual email. So it appears as if I'm sending all of these one at a time, where in fact it goes out in mass. And that has been such a big help to our technical partners we're not ready to let go of that at this point. Got it, thank you. All right, Leanne, looks like another question came in here in the Q&A uh, from Alyssa. Uh, these consultation meetings, what if the IT org does not have the bandwidth to support the request or the request is not a top priority? Does your IT keep a backlog of requests and you and the BRM continue to follow up? How do you continue to draw, drive value when you have these kind of stagnant things and when this happens? So, I don't know if we've ever had a technical partner, to be perfectly honest, ever decline a meeting. Um, I, I, I can only speak to what we experienced here at Purdue. So one of the things that, for instance, our research computing group, also our teaching and learning techni um, technology group was tasked with, was to go out and interact with faculty and find faculty to utilize their services. And with BRM, what we're able to do and help them with is what um, so this sounds a little salesy, but get them qualified faculty. So instead of a group reaching out to 300 faculty in the College of Agriculture with a cold email, what we're able to do in turn is to pick up the phone and say, hey, we have somebody interested in high performance computing, somebody that wants to use the new supercomputing platform, so on and so forth. And in the beginning, there was a little bit of tension, but at this point, they welcome those because they're also looking to get individuals into those environments. And um, that's really helped actually turn a lot of the I'll use the word tension again with technology partners in the beginning and where people like, well, we've been told to do that. And once they realize that we can help facilitate that and do that navigating and connecting and getting on the right people, we've just, they're more than welcome. And that's helped us also build relationships with our technology partner. 
All right, well, I guess we got time for one more question. We'll give it a few minutes for somebody to ask a last question. So what I can say is if you're interested in the annual reports, if you'll send me an email, I will uh, send a link via uh, Outlook or I guess it's SharePoint um, on the web and you can download them yourself. Just please remember those are redacted. That's our ability to um, share those outward is because they're redacted. So the original reports will list actually individual faculty names. Part of, I don't want to say it was a risk, but going into this, um, it was kind of new for us as, you know, people can follow up with those individual faculties and say, you know, did this really happen? Um, one of the things we started doing was getting quotes from the faculty we were working with, and you'll see that especially in the second and third um, annual report, just really validating that, yes, we are working with these people. This, they're the ones giving us the quotes that are kind of value statements. This is where it's helped them with their work. Um, you'll see it again across both teaching and learning, uh, so the uh, teaching space as well as the research space. So, because we cover uh, three areas our BRM team does, and that's research, teaching, and extension. And so teaching is as important as research and extension. Um, and so we make sure that we're hitting all those mission areas also in our reports. Well, Leanne, I appreciate your time just from the sounds of our looking at the chat and the questions, a lot of good conversation, a lot of interested in BRM, people just starting out. Uh, question was asked about access to resources. So um, the recording, the templates, maybe a sort of a scrubbed version of the PowerPoint used to create the reports. That was, someone asked for that as well. I'll work with you, Leanne, to get maybe some of those resources. I will send them out um, an email. The link, a link will be provided to Google Share where you'll have access to download a view of those files and download them. So they should be available to you. Uh, if you do run into issues, just make sure you reach out to me. Uh, my contact information will be, my signature will be at the bottom of the email that goes out. So again, I want to thank you, Leanne, for your time um, and sharing your insight. Her contact information is in the slide deck. We're always looking for fresh ideas. If you're doing something well or something you want to share with the community, um, always looking for presenters. I always say I have a, I have a platform if you've got a voice. Um, so we welcome those ideas and I'll help you put up put together a webinar event. Um, the transcripts recording temples will be sent, templates will be sent out within five business days. Um, it's also a great place to view past recordings and events. There's a lot of good um, past recordings about uh, business relationship management. So I would encourage you to check that out as well. Um, thank you for your attendance and everyone have a great day. Bye now.